All right, let us begin. So, when we last left off, we were talking about carbohydrates. And we had discussed power structures and mutarotation. Okay. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about the chemistry of carbohydrates beyond just producing uh, uh, acids and aldotols. Okay. Um, but first, I would be remiss if I didn't help you out with a couple of things. So, um, Molecules are often referred to, and excuse my horrible drawing, uh, as either furanoses or pyranoses. And that's because they resemble the heterocycles, furan and pyran. Okay, so this would be furan. This is pyran. Okay, and so a six membered carbohydrate ring, you can, you can see is very similar to a pyran ring and a furano a furano sugar resembles the furan ring okay so that's where those designations come from all right so sugars can isomerize and there are several isomerizations that can occur the first isomerization is indiol intermediated Okay, and that is a conversion, all right, uh, in the, the, the placement of the carbonyl carbon, okay? So it's an actual shift, okay? It's a shift of hydrogen and a double bond. Okay, and so you can get sugars converting in that way. Another form of isomerization that can occur is can interconversion between aldoses and ketoses. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then the final is epimerization. Okay, epimerizing. And that is a shift in the spatial orientation or the stereochemistry at one of the chiral centers, just one. Okay? So I would like for you to take a few minutes and uh, do a little Google research and find a common epimerization that takes place for glucose. Okay, so glucose epimerizes to what? Okay, take a couple minutes, pause the video, do some Google searching, write your answer in the comments. All right. Okay. Alrighty. Hope the pen width is, is uh, good for everybody. Okay, if it's not, let me know. So, sugars can also esterify. Okay, uh, we know that carboxylic acids can react with alcohols or hydroxyl groups um, to give us esters. Okay, so if you, you know, don't recall, Right. Remember from organic chem that if we take a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, okay, we can use a dehydration reaction. All right. And that gives us a carboxylic ester. Right. Well, sugars can react in the same way because they have many, many hydroxyl groups on them. Okay. Uh, most common in sugars, all right, 
So for carbohydrates, usually we have phosphate, and sulfate, esters. Okay, so glucose 6 phosphate, for example. Okay, right, take a moment, draw that out for yourself in your notes. Okay? And then, you know, uh, draw out the lactose. Sorry, that's not the lactose. sulfate. Okay. Take a few minutes and do that. Pause the video. There. <clears throat> Still dealing with my allergy problems. So, sorry. You have to put up with it. Okay. So phosphorylated esters, they're very important in me metabolic derivatives, okay? And that's because phosphate, if you'll recall from organic, right, part of that reaction mechanism requires that the hydroxide leaves. And phosphate is much better as a leaving group than hydroxide itself. Uh, sulfate esters, they're more often found in proteoglycans, which are molecules that are proteins conjugated to carbohydrates, uh, and those are usually found as structural elements rather than uh, energy sources or other uh, functionalities. Okay. Uh, one really big example that we've discussed thus far for phosphate esters being so important is DNA, right? DNA and RNA. Because both of these use a ribose phosphate ester. as their backbone. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, <clears throat> whenever we attach, okay, if we attach of a uh, the attachment of a sugar to another molecule is called glycosylation. Okay, it's called glycosylation. And molecules that are glycosylated uh, are called glycosides. Okay, all right. Uh, these reactions usually take the form of a hemiacetal or a hemiketal All right. plus some kind of alcohol. All right? Some kind of alcohol. And really, by alcohol, we mean a hydroxyl group. Okay? We usually mean a hydroxyl group. <laughs> All right? What these give is the corresponding acetal or ketal. All right? And these linkages that are formed are called glycosidic bonds, right? Or glycosidic linkages. And the resulting compound 
right? These resulting compounds are glycosides. All right, so let's take a look at the formation of beta-methoglycoside, okay? So if we have our cyclic glucose, right? Up here we have CH2OH, and then down, down, up, up, okay, so this is beta glucose, why is it called beta glucose, <laughs> I want you to think about that, right, and I also want you to take a moment and identify where is the anomeric carbon. Oops, 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 oops. That's right. That's right. I had my. That's right. What am I? What am I saying? This is beta glucose. Okay. Right. <sighs> Silly Doctor C. All right. So if we combine this with methanol, okay, this substitution routinely happens on, say, carbon-2, right? And what we end up with is we end up with a glycosyl. Please forgive my pitiful draw. All right. So this is beta methyl glycosyl. Right, but the same logic applies to other glycosides. Okay, whenever we attach sugars uh, or glycans, okay, glycans are sugar polymers, we call that glycosylation. And we glycosylate a lot of things, okay? We glycosylate proteins. We glycosylate um, lipids. Uh, we glycosylate other types of biomolecules, okay? Nucleotides, right? All right. So, whenever we're talking about glycosidic bonds, okay? We talk about the kind of connection they have and the two carbons they connect. All right. So glycosidic bonds can be either alpha or beta. Okay. And then we talk about the carbon value, right, for each bond. And it's written in this notation. Okay. So an alpha bond or a beta bond. These kinds of reactions are catalyzed by glycosyl transferases, okay? Um, and we tell other people what kind of bond this is using this kind of notation, right? So uh, if we have glucose alpha 1, 4 glucose, okay? That is a common disaccharide, and I want you to take a minute and draw it out for yourself, okay? Another common disaccharide is glucose beta, 
one for glucose. Okay? And I want you to take another couple of minutes and draw that dice out. Glycosylation is super important, okay? Approximately 2%, all right? Approximately 2% of our genome, all right, that actually codes proteins. All right, is responsible for glycosylation. Okay. And they're key. Glycosylation is key in function of some proteins and some other uh, biomolecules, and also in the biorecognition processes. So, uh, insulin is a protein that is glycosylated, and that glycosylation pattern differs when it's made by, say, a human pancreas cell versus a pig pancreas cell. Okay? The other type of reaction is glycation. Okay? Glycation. So these are non-enzymatic They're non-enzymatic reactions <clears throat> between a reducing sugar and either, uh, usually, usually an amino group. Okay, usually. And these are the the rate of for these increases with heat. But in biosystems it's slow. Okay. One of the most famous glycation reactions is the Maillard reactions. All right, the Maillard reaction. These are essentially the reactions that explain the browning of meat. Okay, and these reactions are slowed. All right, they're slowed by water. And acid. Okay? Because both of those things will prevent the reducing end of the sugar from being able to react with an amino group, either by protonating the amino group, therefore making it non nucleophilic, or uh, by, in some other way, blocking the action, the reducing action of the carbonyl carbon on the sugar, okay? But that is also why you hear people who are like really big on Maillard reactions and really big in cooking say, oh, this is forming meat sugar because it's the, it kind of is, it's the combination of a carbohydrate and amino groups. Um, but the key here is that it's a reducing sugar. It's a reducing sugar. So anybody who says, oh, I'm going to throw in some sucrose to, uh, or, or table sugar to increase the browning of my meat, no, you're not. All you're going to do is make caramel because you'd have to break the glycosidic bond between the two units of gluc the glucose and fructose molecules to create reducing sugars to be able to perform this, rea to enhance this reaction. And that requires either an enzyme, right, like invertase, or Acid. 
Sometimes base can do it. Base can do it. But, you know, usually water and acid, which slow these reactions down. Okay. This is also why if you don't brown the meat or dry the meat before you uh, cook it, it won't brown properly in the pan. So if you're having trouble getting that nice, deep, golden brown crust on your steaks or what have you, try patting it dry before you uh, put it in the pan. All right? Okay. This has been Cooking with Dr. Cup. I know. I know. Like, you all don't know this one. Okay? So, glycation can alter the structure and the functional properties of proteins. Um, so collagen and elastin, okay, they are in our vascular tissues. They're in our skin. That's, that's kind of what gives our skin its pliability, its stretchiness. Over time, in, uh, when exposed to glucose, they will become glycolated, okay? And that actually causes arterial hardening, and it sets off some inflammation triggers. And part of the repair process for that is to surround it with uh, uh, lipids and things so that the, the, the proteins can be repaired. But that causes plaque buildup in the arteries. And since they're not as stretchy, it causes all kinds of problems with your blood pressure. It can, it can lead to a heart attack, right? Um, for people like myself who have diabetes, this process is accelerated because our blood glucose levels are frequently very high. Uh, so it's not a good thing to have a high blood glucose level. So there's three major monosaccharides that I want you to know about. Okay, the first is glucose. Okay. Glucose is our primary monosaccharide for energy. Okay, it is a hexose. All right. Um, and I would like for you to look up the structure and put it in your notebook right here. And then memorize it. Okay. The next key monomer I want you to remember is fructose. Okay. Oh. Side note, glucose, often on food packages, will go by its old name, dextrose. Okay, so named because the most common form is D-glucose, and just so happens that D-glucose rotates like to the right. Likewise, with fructose, I want you to put the structure of it in your notes right there. Okay? Fructose was isolated from fruits, hence the name. Okay? And it is a pentose sugar. All right? So, glucose in its cyclic form is a pyranose. Okay? Pyranohexose, in fact. Whereas fructose is a furanose, okay? And in particular, it's a furanopentose. All right. Finally, last big sugar is galactose. Okay? And again, I want you to look up the structure and put it right there. This is also a pyranose. It's another pyranohexose. Okay, it's a pyranohexose. And I want you to notice one thing. Compare it with glucose. Compare them. What do you see that's different? What do you see that's the same? Believe it or not, the small differences between these two sugars is what gives them most of their physical and chemical properties. All of their physical chemical proper and chemical properties. Okay? <clears throat> so those are the three major classes of monosaccharides. Or the three major monosaccharides that I want you to know. 
There are lots and lots more. I'm not going to expect you to memorize all of them. I don't think anybody can memorize all of them. Okay? So, major derivatives. All right. There's three classes. Okay? First class is the uronic acids. Think back to the last video. What is a uronic acid? Right? It's what happens when we oxidize a carbon that isn't the anomeric carbon. Right? Uh, that forms the uronic acid. So think look up the structure of glucuronic acid. Okay, these uronic acids uh, play roles in metabolism, in helping our bodies excrete waste. So often our livers will tag things with glucuronic acid so that the water solubility is enhanced so our kidneys can excrete it as waste. Okay, the next major derivative class are amino sugars. Amino sugars. like what we get from the Maillard reaction, okay? And so what we do with these amino sugars, well, not quite, is we replace, we replace a hydroxyl group with an amino group, okay? And that creates an amino sugar, right? And we typically will say like things like, oh, and glucosamine. That lets us know that the hydroxyl on carbon 2 has been replaced with an amino group, okay? The last major derivative group is the deoxy sugars, which we've discussed previously in lab, right? So an example of that is to deoxyribose right and 2 deoxyribose is where we 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 have replaced one of the OHs with a hydrogen right and so it can no longer uh bind or, or be glycosylated in that two position, okay? <clears throat> All right, so that's our major monosaccharides in their major derivative classes. The major disaccharides I want you to be familiar with and uh, be able to draw Okay, are as follows. Okay, so lactose. Okay, now lactose is also known as milk sugar. It's what we primarily find in milk. If you're lactose intolerant, you lack the enzyme needed to break lactose down into its two monosaccharides. Okay, and this is between glucose. and galactose. Okay. And the the glycosidic linkage is beta 1 to 4. Okay. So beta glucose will bind uh, or, or bond at carbon 1 to carbon 4 of the galactose and that's what makes lactose. Maltose, okay, maltose is a disaccharide that is produced from the degradation of starch, the hydrolysis of starch. Uh, it's also found in beer as part of the fermentation process because we break down starch, okay? 
So this one is a glucose alpha 1,4 linked to another glucose. Okay. Cell, uh, uh, sorry, cellobios is very similar to maltose. Okay, in that it is a diglucose polymer, but instead of it being an alpha 1 4 linkage, it is beta 1 4. And when you put a bunch of these together, you get cellulose. Okay, and cellulose is the primary uh, uh, constituent to plant cell walls. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, last one is sucrose okay and sucrose is a non-reducing sugar okay it's non-reducing because the two anomeric carbons between glucose and fructose have linked so they can't react any further, okay? Because there's no more reducing capability, right? In all three of these disaccharides, we still have some level of reducing ability, all right? And I'd like for you to take a minute and get those structures and look at the structure of alpha alpha methyl D glucoside, okay? alpha methyl D glucoside, not beta. We drew beta, beta, draw the alpha, and figure out what's the part that allows it to be reducing, right? Because these three are reducing sugars. This one is not, right? And then look up the structure of sucrose. All right? Uh, draw it in your notes and prove to yourself that it's a non-reducing sugar. Okay, I think that's a good place to leave this video. So we will uh, talk again in the next one. Uh, we will go over polysaccharides, uh, and then we will do um, go into uh, heteroglycans and glycoconjugates before we move on to uh, metabolism. Uh, again, uh, just like I said in the instrumental video, if you haven't emailed me with good times for my virtual office hour, uh hours you know i'd like to have it, uh, at least one but preferably two or three so that i can address you all in a virtual face-to-face -face format please do so um if you need an extra day for your exam take it right uh that'll be due friday as opposed to uh well really you could turn it in all the way up until midnight on saturday okay but try to get it turned in at some point on friday please um if there are any other notes that you might have, if there's anything else you need help with, you know how to get a hold of me. Email, phone. I gave you all my cell phone number. You can text me. I answer texts. If you don't believe me, you can ask Kalani. Okay, I've been texting with her back and forth for the past 10 minutes or so as I've been recording this. So, you know, I'm very, very responsive to text messages. Yes, I very much am. Okay? Uh... Anything else, uh, you all know how to reach me. You can leave it a comment or, you know, reach me otherwise. All right. See you in the next video.